You know, I remember very well, I was about 12 years old, uh, and I was never good in a dentist chair. I don't know about you, I know y'all are brave, and you can just kind of never, never shrink. I just didn't do well, and I, I, I was often at the dentist, I had a lot of uh, oral surgeries, and I had braces when I was in second grade till 10th grade, and I was at the dentist or orthodontist every couple months. I just, it was, wasn't good. And I especially had a real problem with Novocaine injections. Because, and as Cindy's told me, don't look. Because that needle looks like some kind of an equine. If you don't know it, so it looks like a stainless steel equine syringe. It's like unreal. And I would look at it and I would break out in a sweat. And at one time, I had a, a dentist. I don't remember the man's name. I was just fighting him and pulling my head away. And he was trying to insert that needle and I, I was causing a scene and I was think I was 12 now that I think about it I was I'm embarrassed for how I was acting in that chair and he took my cheek and pulled it over and he said I have never seen anybody act so childish about a uh, you know Novocaine before this is the you need this so you know sit still and he, from then on, I've been good with it. He kind of, you know, in the, in the movie, someone might be acting up and they'd slap their face and say, straighten up, and you'd say, thanks, I needed that. There used to be a, a men's cologne with that, you know, ch-ch. Well, that's what that dentist did. He kind of woke me up because I did need the Novocaine. He knew the value of it. I was fighting it, though. I was you know, saying, I don't want this. And Jude is about to give some strong, unpleasant medicine but he says, I'm going to give you love, I'm going to give you uh, peace, and I want you to have mercy as you take this. So let's do this. Let's take some strong medicine. Let's read about it. I believe it has direct application to us in 2011. It had uh, application to these people in the first century. It begins with the word, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So verse 3, whenever the Bible refers to beloved, that is an indication he's talking to fellow Christians, fellow believers. And he finishes uh, by, by calling uh, the ones that brought the message to them the saints. So this is for believers. This is for Christians. Christians, I'm talking to you. Beloved ones, he, he's showing care and intimacy. He's saying, I do care for you. And his statement is that I wanted, I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Jude wanted to send a letter to the churches and say, heaven's going to be glorious. And Jesus is there. And, and uh, there's a river of crystal. And, and uh, there's... Uh, angels and it's going to be no pain and, and he wanted to just talk about the wonderful attributes of salvation having your sins forgiven having that load lifted uh having the peace of god which passes all understanding and he wanted to write about that and folks i i'd love to hear about that i'm encouraged just saying those little things to you just now Th those are parts of the christian life but in the moment of wanting to write about the blessings of salvation, the delights of our, our uh, life in Christ, he said it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you earnestly contend for the faith. Something put the brakes on that first letter, and, and it was probably never written. He wrote this letter. He wanted to write about one thing, but God said no, and the Holy Spirit directed him to write about a greater need. And I want to use a, a, a living example from the, the pages of the newspaper to illustrate this. As of this morning, I looked uh, this morning at the headlines. The greatest need for the Japanese people is not food. The greatest need for the Japanese people is not uh, uh, heavy equipment to clean the streets. The greatest need is not uh, to repaint uh, battered buildings. Their greatest need today is to deal with a nuclear act reactor that may melt down and cause a Chernobyl-type disaster. 
Now, I want to pit the, the nuclear reactor against, for example, painting a park bench in their city, uh, or, or getting a new park bench, or re replacing some trees. Those things are nice. Those need to be done. Those things do bring benefit. Uh, automobiles that were lost in their flood or destroyed in homes, those all need to be fixed. But if they're done at the expense of letting the nuclear reactor melt down because they were busy repainting and fixing up and, and shingling a house, that we would say, <laughs> you've got to be over here. This is where, uh, if you don't get this right, everything else is lost. Because see, Chernobyl, that was done in 1986. You still cannot live there. It's uninhabitable. The, the radioactivity, the extent of the meltdown of the core of their nuclear reactor has completely spoiled that area of the Soviet Union. Many lives went into stopping that tragedy. It could have even been worse back in 1986. So now, 25 years later, Chernobyl is not a livable city, that, that area. And it's going to be, I think, over 100 years until the radioactivity will drop to a, a level. So that once large city uh, was, is completely a wasteland. I've seen uh, they've taken video crews and uh, the, the apartments are all there, the schools are all there, but they're all empty. You cannot be in Chernobyl, Soviet Union. That will happen in Japan if this reactor were to go to the next level. I believe Jude is saying... I wanted to tell you about the wonderful things of salvation. I wanted to tell you of the glories of the Christian life. But you must contend for the faith. That is the nuclear reactor that if it melts down, if you don't maintain the, the message and truth that was once delivered to the saints, everything else is you're spinning your wheels. Now, why did I spend so much time earlier telling you about the Immaculate Conception and this distortion that Mary never sinned? Because that group of churches, those believers, did not contend for the truth, and they've embraced error. They've embraced falsehood, and since then, it has led their, their faith to, to depart from the truth. I'm a Baptist not to be saved, but I'm a Baptist because I believe that the, 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 our, the teachings of, of, of Baptist uh, faith over the years are the closest to the New Testament. In fact, if and I've said this in my Bible lessons, if I were to find a, a group of believers that believe more closely to the New Testament, more accurately, then I would join them. And I would, I would nothing against being a Baptist. But my loyalty is not in being Baptist. My loyalty must be to the truth of Scripture. And I cannot maintain something if it begins to run counter to it. And there have been many challenges over the years to, to other denominations. Our own Baptist uh, churches and seminaries have been constantly probed and attacked to begin to dilute and compromise. Back in the 1960s, there was a big move to to interpret the book of Genesis as more of a fairy tale, that there really was no man named Adam, and, and uh, seminary professors were teaching this stuff. And fortunately, godly men and women uh, contended for the faith, and, and they removed these men that didn't hold to certain truths. I'll never forget the, the, the week that I started seminary in 1994, uh, Southwestern Seminary, I was, you know, uh, a school teacher, and I started seminary. That week, the president of the seminary had been removed uh, from being the president, and the door locked on his office by a group of men in the church or in the seminary hierarchy. My mother calls me, and she said, "Is that the school you're going to?" And I said, "Yes, mom, it is." But you know what? There's a testimony because that president was in denial of the virgin birth of Christ. And here, how could a man become the president of a Southern Baptist seminary and he didn't believe deep down? Now, he gave lip service to it. He used to preach about it. But what he'd done, he just began to ignore it or say, well, it's, he would say it's not a key doctrine. It's not, it's not essential. You know, it's more important that we love Jesus and live for him. And, and, and that became typical of many people. And guess where he was?